Previously, we were talking about organizational structures. Let's just narrow down and go, go and look at those organizations inside them. What are the teams types are there, once again, uh, through this uh, survey, where you're like, hey, these are different kind of teams that are there within organizations, and they also, once again, uh, influence uh, the adoption of these technologies. Every year, we try to do some additional clustering uh, by taking certain um, certain groupings and, and seeing, you know, are there clusters that emerge in the data? Uh, and, and this year, we identified uh, four distinct uh, clusters. Uh, one being user-centric uh, teams, so teams that are very heavily focused on, you know, user value and, and moving user value uh, into the hands of customers uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, we looked at feature-driven teams, so the opposite. You know, these are normally teams that take business requirements and, and develop features um, instead of uh, user value. Um, and then we also looked at developing teams, so these would be teams that are really, really heavily focused on like kind of getting the first release of their product out. Um, you know, oftentimes they're associated with smaller companies uh, in our data sets. Uh, and then we looked at balance teams. So teams that do, you know, uh, everything kind of in a, in a more balanced fashion. Um, and so those were the, the four clusters and perhaps not surprisingly to, to this group, the, the user-centric teams and the balance teams seem to have the highest levels uh, of performance, the lowest levels of burnout, higher levels of, of team satisfaction, things like this. And so I think, you know, that kind of coupled with the, the user-centric uh, research that we did really tells us a story about designing for the users and, and how important these things are. Yeah, it's interesting, actually, Eric. I actually hadn't realized um, that these team clusterings emerged from the data. Uh, sort of, uh, I thought that they were prescribed, um, you know, classifications that we would go to, that you had bucketed people. That's very, very interesting that that's what came out. Um, just a couple of comments on the team types. Um, we strive in our engagements um, to be what you would call uh, user centric. Uh, we, we focus on outcomes uh, that matter to the organization. Maybe not at the very top. You know, we're not a McKinsey and Co. We're not going to advise our clients on business outcome, um, business objectives, and things like that. But at the top level, where we talk about product uh, product velocity and agility, where we talk about quality of service, um, we are outcomes oriented in that sense. And that that definitely makes sense, right? Because um, you know, we're, we're not the kind of organization that goes and says, hey, these 40 things that, you know, you have to go and do, we'll go ahead and, and take that off your shoulders and, and get that done, a kind of a thing. The other thing that I want to go ahead and add is, um, besides that we found success like that, is uh, the developing teams. Um, so uh, you had mentioned, Eric, a lot of that might be smaller organizations, but also um, that also probably represents smaller organizations inside larger organizations, right? So a lot of the times the way we affect change even at scale in the large organizations is to start small. So, you know, you've, you've heard them called lighthouse models or pilot models where we go and take an idea, we take a small corner of the organization as proven grounds to production, and then we go in and, and scale that out farther upon success. And, um, you know, maybe we cover it here or, or the audience members can go in and, and read the report later, but it's pretty interesting on the, across the four team types, the different characteristics of what, you know, how they tend to burn out you know, versus how much they find job satisfaction, you know, uh, and how productive they are. Um, it's really, really interesting. And I found it consistent uh, across our engagement as well, which obviously shouldn't be a surprise, um, on user centricity. And then across uh, the, the developing teams. And a takeaway for me, uh, maybe that I hadn't thought about enough was, for example, on the developing teams um, of while it's exciting and it's fun, that there might be, um, you know, whether it be burnout characteristics or whatnot, that we probably need to be a little more cognizant of as we go to make pushes on a, on a small tax surface. I agree. And, you know, one of the things that we kind of hypothesized based on the, the results that we received and, and the clustering around developing teams was that, you know, perhaps the focus was on getting code out and getting these proof of concepts out and the, the focus on things like software delivery, uh, automation, velocity, might be sort of deprioritized uh, and which might lead to the, the higher levels of burnout. So that's kind of one of the things that we recommend for teams that might fit into this cluster is, 
you know, maybe spend a little bit more time kind of focused on the software delivery and, and operations.